I can't wait to see who it pops up here. Let's go with, ooh, this one's going to be a fun one. How about some A.J. Brown action? Oh, for us? I just got to be hating all the time. I'm going to have no luck. <laughs> well, yeah, you, you just got to yeah, tell These all, are all my haters. All, all the haters. It's okay. We'll come back around and people will get to see how wrong you are about the guys you like to. Don't worry about it. It's okay. A.J. Brown. I'll, I'll start with this one, okay? Yeah. Love me some A.J. Brown this season. It took me a minute to get on board. It did. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I'm a Titans fan. Can't help it. Like, just born into it, I guess. I was at the first practice they had inside of Nissan Stadium. I think at that time it was Bridgestone or whatever. I I, 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 I love the red and the blue and, and, and the Titans, right? So it took me a minute to get on board with this. And then I thought, oh, he's going there and Devontae Smith's there. And then I thought, oh, he's going there and it's Jalen Hurts. But the more I started digging into this and taking away the the preseason camp hype, because there is hype with this one. Like, legitimately, I saw somebody the other day say he was going to have 11 billion targets. I don't I think, think that was you. possible. No, I think no. That was I, you that said that. No, it was a legit article writer, I swear. <laughs> if it were me, I, I would have said all the targets. He's just going to get all of them. Um, oh. There's a guy that will listen to the show and think and say Zach Pascal will get the rest of them. Um, but I don't know <laughs> how much rest is going to go around. Here's my my biggest thing that's made me go, I'm sticking A.J. Brown no matter what. I think there's two things. I think A.J. Brown is going to want to prove something this year. He's going to want to prove because he he just cannot let it die that the Titans traded him. Even though he forced his way out and he don't want to say that story, he, that's not what he wants to go with. He wants to act like he was forced out. He's going to want to prove something this year. I think the Eagles have one of the easiest schedules, and they're also going to be in some shootouts. And the main point, though, if you go back and watch Jalen Hurts' film, and you can watch Jalen Hurts' film from his days at Alabama, he has always keyed in on his wide receiver one. If he has a guy that consistently can get open against man coverage, he's always keyed in on that guy. And Devontae Smith, although I think has a great future and was a very talented receiver, is a very talented receiver, he's a zone beater. He's a guy that gets in between the zone. He stretches the field. And he wasn't that man breaker. He he had trouble with press last year a little bit in his rookie season. Maybe that gets better. A.J. Brown was in the top five of receivers for PFF last year, beating man coverage. His quarterback now, Jalen Hurts, was in the top five when passing against man coverage. And you go back to his days at Alabama. He very much made Jerry Judy a first-round pick. He, he stared him down. No, sorry. Calvin Ridley first. He stared down Calvin Ridley in his time there. Uh, you go back and watch Calvin Ridley's senior season, and it was literally Jalen Hurts staring. Like, it, it didn't matter. It, give him 15 seconds in the pocket because he had it with those Alabama behemoths. He was staring down Calvin Ridley. Okay, he goes to Oklahoma. Oklahoma receiver was C.D. Lamb. C.D. Lamb had all of the catches his senior year or junior year, whatever it was. Because he was stared down, I think he could do the same thing with A.J. Brown. And whereas most of the time you don't want that from your quarterback, A.J. Brown can get open. And he can get open a lot. I just think he's going to be a volume player this year. If he can stay healthy, I think A.J. Brown has top three receiver potential. And you're getting him in the late second right now. Yeah, but that that's that's my biggest concern. You said it right there, is volume. Like, the volume, the passing volume for Philadelphia, I don't think it's going to be that high. So, like, even if he gets 30, 30% of the targets, 35% of the targets, I mean, what, what did Hurts throw last year? Like, not all that many. And I, th I don't think they're going to change it coming into this year because it was so successful down the stretch. He only threw it, uh, he only threw it 430 times last year. I mean, that is low. So, you know, barely scraping 100 targets you know he's a he's a he's a short yardage guy if I, for what i've seen as far as like his a dot where he catches a ball i mean maybe that's a product of tennessee's offense maybe it'll be different in philadelphia i don't think he's bad but like and he's i think he's a fine dynasty piece like if you have him in dynasty like he's a good good hold but like at that range we're we're looking Ezekiel Elliott, we're looking keenan allen like kyle pitts you know Mike Evans, those are guys. I would take every single one of those guys over AJ Brown this this season in redraft because you want to talk about volume. 
find me more volume than, than those four guys right there at their, at, at their respective real quick. Talk about volume real quick. If you look at what the Eagles did the first seven weeks of last season, Kevin or is it Kevin Stefanski, the head coach for the Eagles? Might be throwing out a random name and it not be. There's Stefanski with the Browns. Yeah, I might be wrong. With the Browns. Okay. He's Eagles with- head coach, and I, I'm drawing a blank on his name, comes from a passing system. They want to throw the ball. And I think they wanted to last year, but I think they got yeah, seven. Oh, and seven. Huh? Or something. Didn't they go 0 oh, and seven? <laughs> No, they didn't go 0-7. It was but a pretty bad start. It was, a, it was a rough start, but I think what happened was – that. so they had two things, right? They had an offensive lineman go down, which hurt them. I, I don't remember which one it was. But I think they came to realize, okay, we don't have an alpha receiver. You had Devontae Smith, who was in his rookie season. You had Jalen Rager, who – and you had Quez Watkins, <laughs> who is a deep threat, but probably isn't much more than that at this point in his career. He was a second-year receiver, right? They didn't have an alpha guy that could beat man coverage, which is what that scheme needs. But if you look at the first seven weeks, and this is part of the reason I'm so high in Gainwell for this year, because you look at his first seven weeks, it was all kinds of targets as well. You had 35 attempts, 23 in week two. That was against San Francisco. 39, 48, 37, 26, 34. And then you had that stretch where it was like, okay, we're going to pound the rock. And then they ended the season again with 26, 29, 26. I don't say they have to pass the ball 40 times a year, but I think they're going to be in that 26 to 35 attempts per game. And if they're averaging that, there's plenty of targets for A.J. Brown. I think A.J. Brown averages seven targets game this year. That's in my projection. Yeah, but it's not. But that's not the volume I want from from my the guy I'm drafting in that position. Keenan Allen isn't going to get seven targets. He's going to get eight catches a game. I want that. You know what I mean? Like, Keenan Allen's going to get 10 targets, 7 catches. AJ Brown's yeah. going to get 7 targets, 5 catches, you know who maybe. Who throws the ball more, or who threw the ball less than the Eagles are going to this year? The Titans. And AJ Brown always found a way to get a bunch of targets there. I'm not saying, yeah, I'm not saying, but I'm just saying there's a there are players in that range I, I prefer, uh, specifically from a volume standpoint. Mike Evans is going to have. Mike Evans. Okay. He's he could be the wide receiver one this year potentially, given the mess of the wide receivers that are there. Like Julio, I'm not worried about him. Gage is hurt already, and he's still going to be fine. Obviously, um, Brady once he's done with the mass singer, he's going to just go automatic. Uh, going to be in the goat costume. Is that what's going to happen? Has to be. Has to be. <laughs> or or he'll like be like a, a something weird. Like a he pirate or something. Be, he needs to be a dolphin because of all the off season talk that he was going to be a part of. That would be Banner, yeah. <laughs> but Mike Evans is gonna get all the high value targets too. Like he's gonna get all the red zone looks. So that that's I want him over AJ Brown. I want Keenan Allen over AJ Brown because I want that offense over the Eagles. Zeke Elliott, if you you know if you take a Justin Jefferson or a Chase in the first round, then let me get Zeke Elliott in the third where this where he's going. I just prefer people in that range at cost versus AJ Brown. I don't think he'll have a bad year. I think wide receiver top three is. Is aggressive. I think that's his upside. I think it could, I, could be. It's so hard to. I'll say. I will say this. I think it is so hard to predict wide receivers preseason because if you had to pick only twelve, like twelve guys that will be wide receiver ones this year, it's so hard because there's so many other guys that have potential to be wide receiver ones. Oh yeah, yeah. Nobody had Cooper Cup as a wide receiver one last year. And he was the wide receiver one. So I agree. There's, there's a lot of situations, and there's been uh, there's a huge landscape change for far as quarterbacks and receiver groups this year. So we're flying blind right now. Right? We're doing best we can, but like there is a lot of high profile move, movement this se- off season that's going to change that landscape. That's why I like Mike Evans because that's one of the only maintained top level quarterback and wide receiver combos outside of Stafford and Cup. And um, Justin Jefferson and, and Cousins, I, I, he's he's top four, top five as far as that's concerned. So 